after 10 long months, she's she's finally here guys hi welcome back to another princess connect video my name is lace and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming update for october or rather the rest of october and that is essentially going to be our first pre-fez banner which they have called princess gala which kind of makes sense as well princess festival princess gala i mean a gala is kind of like a festival anyway it's all good i'm not going to get mad over some like tiny ass detail as long as we're getting christina as long as she's not being nerfed as long as we're getting the double three star uh, draw rates uh, i'm good guys i'm freaking good all right and so in this video i do want to talk about like especially the ramifications of skipping the christina and going for the new year's yui banner for like the double chance because in five days a lot of people are going to have to make that decision and it is not an easy one well it's easy if you have like no gems but like yeah and so on that note i do want to share with you guys a meme by electricity and it's just a guy from squid game my friend me why are you here i thought you were financially stable and because because old mate did not save enough gems he, he's opening his wallet if you're opening your wallet for christina a what the frick we've been telling you to save since like the dawn of time since like since the vietnam war but alas sometimes it is what it is and just on the note of the princess gala like it's quite a standard naming convention especially for Psy games games for all of you Psy game simps out there you're gonna know what gala is already dragalia lost grand blue fantasy like a whole bunch of like the Psy games ip essentially what is happening for our prefairs normally they actually called gala whenever those games dragalia grand blue fantasy whenever they have a gala it is virtually identical to this where there is an increased three star draw rate but obviously for their respective highest rarity all right again before we get into the banner and like the nitty gritty let's go through the other ones over here and i look at ruka and i'm like i'm so sorry girl you are the easiest skip in history because guys remember after this we have the x chicka we have the new year's yui we've got x ayane we've got valentine shizuru we've got muimi like there are a lot of high priority targets however for those of you who are at like the peak of cb ruka may be a role for you but i am not going to comment on that like you guys know if you're going to be rolling on ruka because the vast majority of the population me included i am sorry but i am staying well away from this banner all right moving on next we have this one which is really interesting we've got the nanaka ruka and the anna event twilight breakers 1.5 times exp for the player it's only good things from here this is the same same clear your one one through to 115 and then you got your normal hard and very hard bosses if you guys don't understand what i just said check out any of my other event guides all right and so moving through we have the mitski and anna shards from this event and i know a lot of you have probably maxed mitski and like some of you have probably maxed anna and you're gonna be like oh man like these shards are gonna be useless well not exactly as we all know we are inching closer and closer to the era of unique equipment and so all of these excess shards can be used towards the mitski and the anna ue the Anna UE in particular is especially strong because she has like a defense down, the magical defense down on the skill one after she gets the UE. And so what that means is that she actually gets to see some play in CB, which is quite interesting. However, the counter to that is that like our timing, uh, our release schedule, it's been a little bit weird to be honest for those of you who have been around for a while like the ue for ray and the christina they're, they're kind of being released a little bit staggered or a little bit like trailing behind the cbs and so the meta by the time we get to anna may actually be a little bit different regardless these are shards i believe anna is from like the princess arena shop and especially for you guys who are having trouble holding princess arena positions this is probably a godsend although unfortunately anna these days is just getting wrecked not many people use Anna especially because of like a single target focus. What Anna can do unfortunately a lot of other characters can do better like uh, Ilya or Hatsune and she's just like unfortunately generally unsafe and all of this of course is from a PvP perspective. However with that let's move on to Dungeon Mana times 2. It is exactly what it sounds like and I think we can finish it off with a Grotto Quest times 2. So let's have a look at the summary and it looks like we have not missed anything. Alright so what that means is that we can start talking about Christine herself as well as the decision of like new year's yui because i think this is the right time to talk about it all right first of all i am going to be streaming the christina pools for myself but on top of that a lot of people have reached out and they're like oh i want to stream my bad luck as well 
And a few weeks ago, we had a Halloween Misaki pool stream. And honestly, that was so much fun. I think there were like 150 of you that came out. And then after my pools for Halloween Misaki, we proceeded to watch like another like seven or eight people pretty much lose to pity. And so guys, keep an eye out for the stream. It's probably going to be when Christina drops. But anyway, I digress. Let's come back to it and talk about Christina herself. First of all, let me explain why Christina is just so freaking cracked. And so we are just in the database right now in the pre-con wiki. And so I'm just going to hop over to skills and then you're gonna see union burst numbers avalon inflicts large physical damage to the frontmost enemy that's not what's really insane what's really insane is the next part which is applies physical invulnerability and so what this means is that for three seconds plus like some little interval multiplier based on skill level she is going to be invulnerable to physical damage and so the impact on this on the meta is that she is usable quite a fair bit in pvp but for cb a lot of people actually use her as like the front of the line instead of having having the Kari tank, it's the Christina tank, for example. But the best part about the skill is that it cannot be dodged and it will always critically strike. And so the first unit that comes to mind when I read that is mother effing Miyako. And Miyako just cannot catch a break. You know, like everybody's coming in, everybody is wrecking Miyako. And then here we've got Christina coming in and then Miyako goes into ghost form and then Christina's like, well, actually. And then Christina goes, whoosh, whoosh. And then it's just sad boy days from there, you know? All right, moving forward, we've got rank two physical attack buff and TP gain rate. Like if you can't see how valuable this is, I don't know what to say. The thing about this one is that it is not just like a straight up TP gain. It's actually an increase in TP boost, which means that after you have this buff, every source of TP gain is going to be magnified. And so everything that she hits, every unit that she kills, all of the damage that is hitting her, all of that is going to be magnified because of this TP boost. And then she's going to go right into her UB again. All right. And so with that, let's move on to the skill two, which is essentially this guy. That's what we're really looking for here. Inflicts a small physical defense debuff. It's your defense down to the target. And looking at the multipliers, this is essentially like having a ray, but with her unique equipment. And so all in all, with all of these skills together, you can see why she is such a freaking strong character, especially in the physical space. There is no character right now that can like do all of this combined. And there are not many characters in the game, even on JP, where there is a skill that cannot be dodged. And so just quickly on the practicality of all of this, she is your powerhouse for CB. And then from the PvP space, like where you use Hiyori, where you use Kari, where you use Tomo, but like mainly Kari and Tomo, Christina can definitely be like a stand in. And although you can probably probably replace them with Christina, you can't do it the other way around because Christina's shoes are just so hard to fill. All right, that takes me to the probably most important part of the video, which is, well, should I skip this prefez or this Christina banner and just roll in about two months time. And so let's kind of like explore that option. If you skip Christina now, it means that you're down one Christina in CB for October and November. On top of that, you may have a harder time in PVP, but honestly, if your box is like relatively end game, like Christina is not overly mandatory or like compulsory for PVP. Like I said before, Christina, whilst she does counter Miyako, Miyako already has like a whole bunch of counters. On the other hand, she doesn't really like change the meta because like I said if she replaces anybody it's going to be like the Kari or like the Tomo and whilst that's nice the Kari and Tomo like the comps typically are pretty replaceable and so from a competitive point of view what you are really losing out on is October and November CB now let's get to the interesting part which is well what are Christina's rates on the New Year's Yui banner so if you do do the skip the only way that you can get Christina is that if you get her as a spook or as an off banner on the New Year's Yui banner if if you miss her in November, then like that's that's no good because you're gonna have to wait until January, which is actually not that far away. But the thing about pushing Christina back to the New Year's Yui banner is I'm pretty sure that the rates are not the same for New Year's Yui and Christina. You are kind of still fishing for like the off banner for Christina at a lower rate. And so then should you roll for Christina now or should you wait for the New Year's Yui banner? Most of you already know the answer to this and I'm just rehashing, but like it just really needs to be said. And it's that if you are low on gems, if you don't have a full spark, I would definitely recommend that you wait until the New Year's Yui banner. Me personally, having played competitive CB top 10 for like the last 10, 11 months or whatever. In my opinion, it is not worth it if you're going to have to spark Christina and spark New Year's Yui together. For example, even if I hit top 10 twice, like in October and November, that gives me 20k gems. But I don't know about you guys, but I've been refreshing like six times, like every freaking day for a while now. And on top of that, the top 10 
content pressures are pretty time consuming. And so especially if you're going to have like some pretty bad luck, even though it is on the two times rate. And I believe Christina is actually on the normal rate up. So she is 0.7% as opposed to 1.4. And if all of that leads you to accidentally sparking Christina as well as New Year's Yui, the worst case scenario is it's going to be going up to 600 pulls, which is two sparks, which is like 90k gems, which most people do not have. To be honest, I am still on the fence. Like, do I want to go casual for maybe like two CBs and then maybe come back after the New Year's Yui? Whilst I'm leaning on the yes, Christina also kind of solves a couple of my PvP problems, which is ironic, especially because she is mainly like a CB unit. On top of that, what I do want to emphasize is a lot of people I know are like, oh man, why do they make like a character like Makoto so broken? Why is it that every freaking comp to take down bosses, like we need Makoto and Jun, Makoto and Jun everywhere. Christina is going to be like that for the months of October, November, like it, we're probably going to have a lot of comps for a lot of like the event bosses, the VH bosses, and they are more than likely going to feature Christina. And so if you guys can handle that frustration, I would probably still recommend going for the Christina on the New Year's Yui banner, because just from a statistical point of view, that's what really makes sense. Now, I want to cover a scenario which is like a, a pretty unlucky scenario. And that is if on this festival, on this gala, the New Year's Yui banner, you didn't manage to get either New Year's Yui or Christina up to 300 pulls. In that case, you have to spark and choose between New Year's Yui or Christina. The choice is 100% Christina. New Year's Yui is good. She is really good. She does make a lot of like impossible things happen. But again, especially from the point of view of like the VH bosses or like the general PVE content as well as PVP, Christina unfortunately is just that cracked. However, there is the opposite argument to be made for the New Year's Yui, right? Because you can spark Christina Christina on any of the festival banners. And so if you did miss out on her, like on this one, you could spark her on the Mwimi banner or get spooked by her. But as for New Year's Yui, you can't do that, right? You're going to have to wait until she gets rerun one year later over here. And so that actually influences the decision quite a fair bit, right? Because technically speaking, you have more opportunity to get Christina like every time there's a fez up. But New Year's Yui, like a lot of the other limited characters that are non-prefez, it's a yearly thing. And so with that, I think I've given all of like the necessary factors for you to make your decision. In my opinion, Christina is the higher priority. I like a good offense. But yeah, with all of that information out there, only you can really make the choice. Again, to sum it up, if you have a low amount of crystals, like not even a spark, I'd probably be waiting until November for this one. But then if you truly get unlucky on this one, should you pick between Christina and New Year's Yui? Yeah, there is more opportunity to get Christina, but I think that Christina is a lot more impactful. And so with that, I want to leave you guys with a secret question. Are you guys going to be rolling on Christina now? And what I'm really asking is how big are your gem stores? You know, you know what? Scratch the first question. I want to know how many gems you've actually saved for Christina. And if you guys could drop me your gems down into the comments below, I would really appreciate it. It means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, and if you would like to support the channel we've got a membership thing but otherwise as old mate chris once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye